Okay, so we're here again on Schneider's Bureau booth uh, with the he, the good doctor, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Dieter Dopfer, who is hello. In many ways, the father of the Eurorack system. You know, uh, certainly the adoption of it. Yeah, together with uh, Bob Williams, right. we did it uh, nearly. We started nearly at the same at the same time. So I think Bob uh, has also uh, a lot done for for the uh, Euro. So this year, or well, certainly in the last 12 months, everything it's really starting to get crazy in Eurorack. Why? Why is that? Do you think? What is it that's driving this? Well, um, after all, I really don't know it, but I have some ideas. Uh, I think uh, one reason is uh, that there are in the meantime so many different manufacturers. Uh, when there were only two, three, or four manufacturers, um, the customers were not sure if they can treat them, because if you start with a system from a small unknown company called Dupfer. Uh, if I start a modular system and if they go ban bankrupt after five years or something like that, okay, what, what should I do then? But uh, I think um, the Eurorack has uh, established because there are so many uh, manufacturers in the meantime with so many uh, different uh, modules. I think this is uh, the most important thing. And after all, it was a good idea um, to publish all the electrical and mechanical uh, specifications. I did it uh, from the beginning. From the beginning you could look at our website, what is the dimension of the front panels, where are the mounting holes located, how is uh, the bus defined, where, is the, the, where are the voltages and so on. And so all the other uh, companies uh, had a base where they where, where they could start, and I think this is uh, one of the reasons. Another reason is uh, that uh, the musicians uh, are getting bored from uh, from their dig uh, digital uh, operation. They want to have real knobs. They want to have real switches, and, and so on. Uh, a lot of our customers they already have. Uh, digital synthesizers uh, on, the, on the laptop, but they say, I want to have something real. That's interesting you say that. And in terms of the Eurorack format itself, um, do you, you know, MIDI is undergoing a transformation to a MIDI 2.0, obviously backward compatibility. Yeah. Is there anything behind the scenes happening with the Eurorack format, perhaps behind the scenes in the case? You don't want to change the size, but is there something that you, you could see moving forward, what it might be able to provide for another version? Yeah, well, the problem is um, the, the backward compatibility. So if you change anything, uh, this may cause problems with older modules or older uh, racks. So one idea is, if I could turn back uh, the wheel of time, I would use so-called boxed headers for the bus boards, so that it's impossible uh, to uh, plug the module in the, 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 the wrong way out. But yeah, if, as I said, if I could turn back uh, a wheel, I would do it. Now it's a bad idea to introduce it, because there exist modules, not only from us, also from other manufacturers, where the nose, the, the that codes, uh, the, the, the connectors, are on one side or on the other side. If you now introduce uh, bus boards um, with, with these box uh, he headers, you, you will have problems because uh, the customers have to put it in the wrong way for 50% for or 30% of the existing modules. So that is why we think it's not a good idea. Ah, I see. And famously, obviously, we're just over from the IRA booth. Yeah. Roland have introduced yeah. their own Eurorack modules uh, entering the market. Yeah. What do you think this means for everybody as a whole? Um, I think this will push again the market because uh, if a well-known company like Roland, who uh, is one of the fathers of, of, of audio uh, synthesizers, if, if they now uh, introduce modules uh, in the, A1, in, in the uh, Eurorack format, I'm quite sure that it will it will push the market again. So where do you see innovation going now? I mean, we have digital modules, we have analog modules, we have hybrid modules, we have DSP modules. Where do you think the most exciting stuff is happening for you? Because you're a designer. Right. Oh, that's really different. Uh, that's, that's difficult. That's, that's, that's difficult to say. Um, it was always a good idea for us uh, during the last year to ask uh, musicians what they want. And this is what we will do in the future too. 
So uh, most of uh, our new designs uh, were based on ideas uh, by customers. And I think you, you, you need to have a ear, a ear for, for your customers. And sometimes we also uh, design modules just, just of our own. But it's very important to, to be in contact with, with musicians, also with musicians uh, which are playing live on stage. For example, uh, the Iceland uh, band Gas Gas or Gus Gus, yeah, they, they have a lot of good ideas because they are on stage three or four days every week and they know what's important and, and, and what is required. Yeah. Which brings me on to interestingly, lots of there's pressure, or there are certain people who are saying it would be great if we could have some kind of patching or modularity in terms of recall. How do you feel about that? Um, that's a problem because um, it would be possible um, to store all the settings of, of switches and, uh, and knobs and so on. But if it comes to real patching with cables, you would need kind of a robot who, who changes the, the, the patches. So I don't think uh, it will work. It, it would work only uh, if you have a limited system where you have uh, three VCOs and uh, so if it is fixed then you could uh, introduce kind of an internal uh, digital matrix which you can switch but it will from my point of view it's not possible uh, for a free modular system where you can combine all the models you want to have. We already had a matrix uh, which, which was programmable it was uh, eight Eight times eight, but okay. That's, that's only one small fraction. If you have a large system, you would need a matrix of I don't know, 500 times 500. So it's impossible to realize. So I don't think uh, it would be possible uh, to store the parameters of each module, but not the patching. But then you, it's only. It's, it's only a part of, of everything. And so I think we will not go that way. Yeah. Dieter, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, welcome for coming. Uh, thank you for coming. And I'm sorry, I caught a cold. So. Uh